Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our church service this morning. Today, we meet in online only because we're taking some COVID precautions, but we really trust that today you guys are at home and that you're warm and that you're safe, that today you guys will just join together with us as we sing praises to our Lord Jesus Christ. So right now, I want us all to stand to our feet, wherever you find yourself, in your bedroom, in your living room. Let's all stand together and let's worship our Lord together.
Amen, amen. Let's just hear from the word of the Lord this morning. It says this in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. It says, But thank God He has made us His captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. Now He uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. So we thank you, Jesus, that today the battle belongs to you, that you lead us, that you guide us, Jesus, that we are in your triumphant procession, Lord Jesus, and that today we have complete victory in you, that you, you're causing us to move forward, Lord Jesus, to spread your word, and that our word, as we speak your word to others, Father, that's like a sweet perfume in the nostrils of those around us. That Jesus, even our worship and our praise to you today, and Father, we pray that today it'll be a sweet incense to you. That Holy Spirit, you move mightily within our hearts today, Lord Jesus, for your word as it gets preached, Lord Jesus. Let it fall on our hearts. Let us be receptive to it, Lord God. That Lord Jesus, you'll move us and let us be an unstoppable church together in your name. Amen. Well, welcome again, everybody. It's so good to be together. And uh, as you guys are at home, I trust that you guys are all together and that you're safe. And uh, just a few announcements that are happening in the life of the church. Today, um, I'd just like to mention a few things. First of all, we have United Prayer this coming Thursday at half past seven here at the church. So just make sure that um, you keep informed with that for about an hour. We'll be together here on Thursday night. Also, just have a look at all our prayer uh, opportunities throughout the week and make sure that if you are available to come through and pray with us throughout the week, there's always an opportunity for us to do that. Then next weekend is Father's Day, and we're doing something really special for fathers. As you fathers come through to the service next week, uh, we have a special thing we're going to be doing. We're going to have uh, a free coffee for everyone from Infusion Coffees. And it's going to be between the time slots after the first service and beginning of the second service, between 9.30 and 10.30. So come along, you'll get a coupon and have a free coffee. And also for moms and kids, they, you also have an opportunity to buy your own coffee too. But dad, it's your special day and you guys get a free coffee. So please join us next week. You can either choose Americano or Cappuccino, whichever you want. And it's on us. So you guys come and enjoy that and it will be served outside in the open so there's uh, you can drink it outside with your mask off then with regards to um, volunteers guys uh, we're always open to have you guys get involved there's always great opportunity to be involved in the life of the church and to make the body stronger and stronger so please make sure you go online go register to become a volunteer in whatever area within the church it's all there so please do that and we would love to see you uh, join us together in ministry. Then our prayer line, our prayer line is always open. We want to encourage each and every one of you to, to reach out to us, even today as we all at home, reach out to us of how the, the service has touched your life. Talk to us about what testimony has happened in your life right now. Uh, ask us any questions that you might have, any prayer needs that you might have uh, for today and in the week to come. And we would love to reach out to you and just speak to you over WhatsApp and have one of our elders connect with you. So please make use of our prayer line. It's a real opportunity for ministry there. We're going to go into a time of offering now. So I want us just to, to prepare our hearts. There's opportunity for us to give. Just because we're not in the room together doesn't mean we can't give. So we have... EFT options for us to, to give this morning, and then also a QR code for Zappa. So that'll be on the screen right now. So let's just bow our heads as we give to the Lord. So Heavenly Father, we are incredibly grateful that you are a father of good gifts, that you're such a good father that you've, you have just bestowed your blessing upon each of us. That Father, that everything that we have, we know it is from you and it belongs to you. But Lord Jesus, this morning, we want to give back to you in worship. Thank you that you've given us so many ways and, and means to worship you. And today we count it a privilege, Lord Jesus, to worship you through our finances. So Lord God, as these finances um, come through, Lord Jesus, we, we really want to pray, Lord God, that you use it to the extension of your kingdom. Father, we want to see great and wonderful things happen, Lord Jesus, in this community, Lord God, in our city, in our country, throughout the world, Father, that you would use Linkway Church, Lord Jesus, in a unique and a mighty and a powerful way to, ex to expand your kingdom, Lord Jesus. So we thank you for the faithfulness of your people, Lord God, as they're given. And Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you just bless them, Lord God, in a, in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay. 
stand as we worship our Lord.
And welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Uh, it's really sad for us that we can't see you face to face. It's only myself and Pastor Alan in the room right now, uh, but really expectant and trusting that the Lord is going to speak to you through the message that you're about to hear, but also that you've met with the Holy Spirit already as you've worshipped and we're excited to be able to be together again next Sunday for Father's Day and have a lack of coffee outside and, and just celebrate together what God is doing and His goodness. And so even though we're joining in a bit of a different way, uh, really expectant to see what God is going to do. Um, last week we heard a message from Pastor Alan that was just straight fire as he spoke into communion and baptism, those two ordinances that speak so much of who we are in Jesus and what we've received from him and how it just speaks to our life in the spirit as we continue with him and how that makes us an unstoppable church when we know our identity in Jesus and as we celebrate that and do those things in a way that's not just empty external ritual. Today we're going to be talking about Holy Spirit togetherness and we're going to see how Jesus has an intention for his church to gather together in large groups and in small groups because when he impacts us, he expects us to be bonded together in such a way that our life with him 
is something that goes through every single daily experience that we have and that we meet with people and we're connected to other believers, not just once on a Sunday or once during the week for a small group meeting, but all the time because that's how he changes us and he makes us part of this new community. And Jesus' intention for us as a church is that we are together in the big and in the small. And so something that the Lord really just put on my heart so hectically for us as a church is how even in a crowd, even in a large group of people, Jesus sees you and he knows you and he's powerful enough to meet with a huge crowd of thousands of people and change lives around, even as we'll read today in the scripture we're gonna be digging into. But at the same time, He has compassion on you and on me as the individual. He knows us, he cares for us. And so if you don't know Jesus yet, just know that you're not missing somewhere, you're not overlooked by God, you're not just a figure in the crowd or a number. The Lord knows you, he sees you, and he's got intention for you. And so I pray that you'd be encouraged by that and that you would know that you've been put together with the body, that Jesus, when we put our faith in him, makes us part of his family, his body, and that family, the church, expresses itself by gathering in small groups and in large, beautiful celebration as we come together in multitudes of people. And so today, what I really want us to know as a church is that we are most unstoppable when we are devoted and together in large and small groups. And you as an individual, you're gonna be most unstoppable in your life and in your walk with Jesus if you are consistently meeting with other believers in the big gathering but also have people around you in small community. So I'm gonna pray for us and then we're gonna be jumping into Acts chapter two. So wherever you are at home right now, just settle things down a little bit, quiet the kids, do whatever you need to do. We're gonna pray and we're gonna ask the Lord to speak to us and to just get hold of our hearts and help us to worship him better and just love and enjoy being part of the church. So close your eyes, let's pray together in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, I know that things are looking a bit different today, but in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, we ask for your power, we ask for your anointing, God. I pray that you would open our hearts and our eyes and our minds even wider to what you want to say to us, and that, Lord, you would draw us closer to you, that you would just pull us into deeper intimacy and fellowship with you, and that, Lord, you would blow us away but how beautiful it is to be part of your universal church, your big church, and even when we get together in places like this, when there's lots of us together worshiping you and loving you and singing your praises, that God, there's something special about that. And Lord, I pray that you would reinvigorate that in our hearts. And so Lord, bless this word. Holy Spirit, help me as I preach it. And God, help all of us as we receive this, that our hearts be open and that we would hear from you. In Jesus' name. So we're gonna be jumping into Acts chapter two and I encourage you to follow along where it says this from verse 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayers. And awe came upon every soul, so that many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, They receive their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all of the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Come on, (laughs) that is awesome, that's amazing. This is the first of about half of a dozen summary statements in the book of Acts where we get this little picture of how the church is doing at the time and some of the distinguishing features and characteristics that they were displaying at that moment. And what I wanna do is just back up a little bit so that we get some of the excitement and some of the context behind this and hopefully it'll stretch your heart as well in terms of what you are believing for the church and for your own life. Jesus, by the time he ascends into heaven, had amassed a group of about 120 disciples who were devoted followers of his that would go with him, travel with him, and he'd impacted a lot of other people along the way and others had put their faith in him as the Messiah, as their Messiah, but it was this 120, his group of committed followers that were with him. And those are the 120 that were together on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell on them and they made such a ruckus that they drew a massive crowd in Jerusalem that was packed at the time because of Passover. And we know that it was a large crowd because we read just afterwards that Peter gets up and he preaches and because of the power of the Holy Spirit on him, 
3,000 people put their faith in Jesus and are baptized on the same day. So it's a huge crowd that he preaches to and 3,000 people respond. And what blows my mind about that is it's not clear from the text earlier on in Acts that when those 3,000 people are saved and baptized, it's not clear whether all 120 of the disciples are involved in those baptisms because if they were, it'd be 25 baptisms each simultaneously to baptize all of these people. Or if it was just the 12 apostles. Because if it was just the 12, they would be baptizing 250 people each. And if they were spending two minutes per person, that would still take them eight hours of simultaneous constant baptism to baptize 3,000 people. And, And the point is this, the excitement of all of that is just, wow, the church explodes. It just grows because of the power of the Holy Spirit. He does something beautiful and amazing. The word of Jesus is preached and people come into fellowship and relationship with God. And that's where in those places, one of those places where we get to see the blessing of the big, the blessing of the big, the way that God impacts thousands of lives, draws lots and lots of people together. We read in these verses today in in Acts chapter two that when they got together, whether in big groups or in small groups, there were a couple of common elements that were sort of shown and uh, displayed in those times together, being the, the teaching of the apostles, which were those 12 that were authorized by Jesus and commissioned by him and equipped by him and had spent time with him or witnesses to him to go and preach everything that he had taught them and to multiply and replicate his ministry. We also see that they were to be devoted to fellowship with each other, to having deep community with each other, knowing each other, to the breaking of bread, which is communion, and then to prayers. And later on we read as well that together in big and in small groups, they were praising God. And so you see these different elements that they exhibited, whether in the big group or in the small group. And even though those things look different in the big and in the small, it is something that they practice and they were devoted to. The scriptures tell us that they had one heart towards these things. And that for me is just really, really amazing. But when you see that displayed in the big, it's just incredible. And early on, we know that the church was meeting in a place called Solomon's Portico. And so we've got a picture of that where you'll be able to see a picture of the temple in the middle, surrounded by the rest of the temple complex. And you can see the huge area that's there and even the covered walkway that surrounds it, which is Solomon's Portico, the colonnade, where thousands of people could gather together to hear the word, where they could come together, they could worship, they could do these different things in a massive group. And so one of the things that just tugged at my heart, and I hope it tugs at yours, is that Jesus is so powerful and he's so good that he can move entire crowds of people by his spirit. He can save thousands in a moment. And so I pray that there's something in your heart where your expectation just grows, that your expectation just lifts a little bit to know that God can do that. He doesn't just do it in ones and twos where one or two people get saved or a little bit of incremental growth or a little bit of breakthrough in your life. He is able to do the huge. He's able to do the big and save thousands of people at the same time. And that's what happens here. This is how we see the church exploding. And so I would love it if you would just give thanks to God if you experience Jesus for the first time in a crowd, in a large group of people, because it should tell you how powerful he is that he could impact so many people at the same time, and yet he has personalized specific care and intention for you. It's just beautiful. So as a church, when we gather together, we're supposed to gather together as large bodies, as big corporate assemblies. It's it's part of our history even as the people of God. If you look into the Old Testament and you see how God deals with his people, Israel, We see that he calls multitudes together into festival and people gather in thousands to hear the word being proclaimed and to get direction from their prophets and their leaders. Beautiful time of high festival worship moments where the crowd just celebrates and loves God and gets to hear from him. It's it's part of our history to, to gather like that. In the New Testament, One of the most frequent ways that the church is labeled is as the ecclesia, which literally is a group of people that are being called out with a purpose to gather together. An assembly, it's a word that was used for different gatherings as well. So even if you had a big political rally in our kind of day, that would be an ecclesia. It's a big group of people that come together. And there's blessing in there. There's amazing truth that we get to be part of something that is so much bigger than ourselves. And that's one of the reasons it's so beautiful to be part of a church that is together, that meets together in person and is large because we get to know that this is much bigger than just me. If you've put your faith in Jesus 
It's much bigger than just you. You are part of something so much bigger and it should make you appreciate God even more that he's able to do that. We are part of the big universal global church and when we get together in person in hundreds and even in thousands, it's a beautiful and a special thing. And one of the blessings that we get to see of the big is the multiplication of ministry. One of the blessings of gathering together in that kind of way. After the scriptures that we've read here, the church grows even more. It explodes again and thousands more are added and more people get saved. And we read in Acts chapter 4 from verse 32, the full number of those who believed were of one heart and one soul and No one said that any of the things that belonged to them was their own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of Jesus, and great grace was upon all of them. And it's beautiful that in those times where the church would gather, and we read especially in Acts that very commonly they would meet in Solomon's portico where thousands could gather and public addresses could be made, It's so amazing to know that in those times, the teaching ministry of the apostles and the signs and wonders that were being done essentially were being multiplied because now thousands of people were exposed to it at the same time. People could hear from all over. They could see what was happening. The church was gathering together and the teaching and the ministry that was happening had a much wider reach and scope because so many people were gathered together. And that is a beautiful thing that ministry can get multiplied in that kind of way. Thousands of people gathering together. How wonderful, how special. And part of what that really stirs in me is how, for us as believers, we need to remember that Jesus wants to impact the generation through us. As a church, he wants us to go and reach the nations to impact the world. And sometimes when it's just a few of us, we kind of forget that. And so to know that we are part of a much bigger body and that as a large body, when we meet together, there's multiplication of what can happen here to go out there. And even the work that Jesus wants to do in your life goes way beyond just your life. And so maybe there's a bit of a challenge there for you just in terms of your expectation and and how you see God moving in your life and, and what you're wondering for and dreaming for one day. In Exodus 19 from verse five, we see the same picture of how ministry is multiplied when God speaks to Moses to give him words to give to the people. And it's obvious that the whole nation gathers together to hear this. And so from verse five in Exodus 19, the Lord says, now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all of the peoples for all of the earth is mine and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, a nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. And Moses then communicates this to the hundreds and thousands of Israelites. In this particular case, he first gives it to a massive group of the elders of the people and then that gets disseminated to the wider wider people of God. But frequently in the Old Testament and in the New, we see how God brings together multitudes of people to hear his word, to meet together, and then that multiplication of ministry happens. Because as I preach something, and it has impact way beyond just the three or four of us that are together, if we're a big crowd, more people can benefit, more people can hear. In Matthew 5, from verse one, we see Jesus starting to teach his Beatitudes. And it says that he sees the crowds that are gathering to him, and so he goes up to the mountain, and his disciples came to him so that he could teach them. A big crowd gathers and he positions himself in such a way that he can from the mountain speak to all of them and he can be heard and his words and his ministry can be multiplied. I think you guys see the point. In Acts 5 verse 42 we read, every day in the temple and from house to house, the apostles did not cease teaching and preaching that Christ is Jesus, that he is the Lord And when they were preaching in that temple court where thousands could hear, you can just imagine the teaching and the word being able to reach wider. And it didn't stop them going house to house and teaching in small groups and all of that, but the multiplication of their ministry that happened. And so the question that I have for us is, as you look at your own life, have you limited God in his scope? Are you trusting him for more? Do you believe that he can do abundantly more even than what you can imagine or hope for? Is he in your mind, is he able to save thousands in an instant? Or have you kind of relegated him to just the little incremental breakthroughs that we sometimes see, which are beautiful in their own right, but our God is big, he's gracious, he's powerful, and he can move nations. It's a beautiful thing. 
Another blessing that comes from the big and as the church gathers in large groups is corporate anointing that rests on us as God's people. We read in verse 43, it says, all came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. The reality is simply that there is something special about being together. As we gather together, not just three or four of us, even though there it's guaranteed that the Lord's presence is with us, there is something special about gathering in hundreds and even in thousands to lift up the name of Jesus, to worship him, and we just see the atmosphere being different and the kind of things that God does. It's just, it's beautiful. It's, it's so much more than sometimes we expect from day to day. And so I don't know if you can maybe think about your kind of experience of the most people that you have gathered together to worship God. How many was that? Was it a couple of hundred, maybe a thousand? I don't know if you can think back to any of those experiences, but I know for me, more than a decade ago, early on in my walk with Jesus, the largest gathering I can remember being in was at a passion conference at the Belleville Velodrome where there were about 6,000 people together as Chris Tomlin was there leading worship and Louis Giglio was preaching and some of these old names that some of us are familiar with. And I remember as a young believer looking around and hearing people singing, 6,000 of us singing and lifting praise to Jesus. I remember thinking to myself, wow, this is special. Like I'm part of this, this is amazing. And so there's just this corporate anointing that rests on us as we lift Jesus up. The scriptures tell us that when he is lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. And that speaks of what happens on the cross, but it's the reality as well of what happens when we get together and we have one purpose and one heart to worship him, to love him. And as we lift him up, we all know how different it is when we are in a room full of people or in a stadium full of people and their hearts are just reaching out to God and worshiping him, honoring him. It is amazing. In Psalm 22, we read in verse three, the psalmist David says, Lord, you are holy and you are enthroned on the praises of your people Israel. Another translation they would say that, say that you make your dwelling in the praises of Israel, that God, you inhabit our praise. And as we come together there, even as a nation, you are there, you are lifted up. There's this anointing that rests on us. In Acts 2, from verse one, earlier in the chapter that we're reading in today, we told that on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost arrived, the full number of the disciples were gathered together. They were all together in one place and they experienced what God wanted for them. The anointing of God that rested on them as the spirit was poured out. And the beautiful truth is simply that there are some things in the kingdom that I can benefit from simply by being there with other people in a gathering. There are some things that I can see and experience simply by being there. Just because I was being there, I can experience it. But when there's only six or, or 10 of us, let's say, there's just a, a diversity of, of gifts that's lacking. There's a diversity in, in age and race and all these different kind of things that just simply you cannot have unless you are a large group of people gathered together because that best represents God's work among every nation, every tribe, every tongue. And Jesus intends for there to be a plurality of gifts in play when we gather together that we simply cannot have when it's just a few of us that meet together. In 1 Corinthians 14 from verse 23, Paul talks about how the whole church comes together and as we come together and there is prophetic utterance and there are words spoken in tongues and all of that, when gifting is at work and we as the body are gathered together corporately, when that gifting is at work and especially when an unbeliever comes in and they hear prophecy, it says that the secrets of their heart are laid bare and they will fall down on their face before God and they will worship him and they will say, surely the Lord is among them. How beautiful that when we gather together in a big group and the gifts are working and are active, that can be the kind of impact that we see on unbelievers. And that moves us very nicely on to the third thing that I wanted to mention here in terms of the blessing of the big, and that's the public witness that we see in play, not just here in Acts chapter two where we read, but when we meet together frequently as large groups of believers, the public witness that we have. In verse 46 to verse 47, it says, day by day, Attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all of the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. You see, when they gathered together, they were easily seen by the public. 
They gathered in Solomon's portico in their thousands and everyone else could see what was happening. And so they could witness firsthand the teaching that was going out. They could see firsthand the signs and wonders that were being done. And when someone was being healed or something like that happened, they didn't have to hear about it secondhand. They could see it themselves. We see a little bit later on, after the scriptures that we've read in Acts chapter three, Peter and John, as they go up to the temple, as was the habit to go and pray and meet with the people of God, that's when they heal the lame beggar along the way. And this man who was was lame and everyone knew who he was, followed Peter and John into Solomon's portico and was praising God and giving thanks. And everyone could see this happening. Everyone could see it and they knew this person. And so for me, that just speaks so hectically of the power of God and the public witness that the church has when we gather together and everyone can see what is going on. And we're told that after people see that public miracle, Peter preaches again and again, thousands respond to the message and are saved and the church explodes once again, just grows exponentially. What a beautiful thing. Our witness, when it's public like that, multiplies, it goes wider and people can be impacted. In Matthew 5, Jesus says the same thing to us in terms of our witness. We're from verse 14, he says, you are the light of the world and a city on a hill cannot be hidden. In the same way as well, people don't light a lamp and put it under a basket, but they put it on a stand so that the whole household can have light. So in the same way, let your light shine before men so they can see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven like a city that is up on a hill, publicly, visibly seen as we live for Jesus, our good works shining the light of Christ into the world. But as a church, when we gather together, our public witness, where just like these early believers, everyone knew where they were meeting, anyone could join with them, everyone could see exactly what was happening there. They were publicly visible. And that's our heart as a church as well. Not just when we gather here at Linkway, but for us as believers that in the world we are visible, we are seen, people can see and hear our testimony, they can see the grace of God that is on our lives. That's how it's supposed to be. And we wanna be easy to find. And so if you are one of those who your only experience of church is meeting together just as a small group of people, You're missing out. There's so much more that the Lord wants you to experience. There's so many blessings of being together in the big public corporate gathering of the saints. And I've spoken to so many people recently who because of COVID haven't been able to come to church and how their hearts are just longing to be together again with the people of God in public gathered together in our hundreds and and in our thousands. But the flip side of all of this is true as well, that as much as you are missing out if your only experience of church is in the small, you are also missing out if your only experience of church is in the big. If that's all that you've experienced in your walk with Jesus, because there is significance in the small. In verse 46, we read, day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they receive their food with glad and generous hearts. The bulk of the letters in the New Testament that are written are written to churches in an area and there's an expectation that the letter would be read in a public corporate gathering of of lots of people but at the same time those very same letters speak of small churches that meet in homes and individuals that lead churches that meet in smaller iterations. And so the idea is clear that we're supposed to get together and that's our history and that's what we can see archeological evidence and historical records attest to as well that the church would gather together in big numbers, even in places like Ephesus where there's an amphitheater where hundreds and thousands of Christians would meet together but then evidence as well of of people continuing to meet in homes and in smaller groups, little pockets of believers everywhere, gathering together corporately but then also being together in those smaller settings There's a beautiful reality of of how that happens and I'm really encouraged just to see how how God uses us in those spaces. And so Jesus' intention for you is that you are to be deeply connected to a small group of believers as well, an intimate fellowship of people, even while you are connected and involved in the wider, larger, corporately gathered body as well. Because in those settings, in those smaller kind of settings, just two things quickly, we see that there's intimacy with others when we get together in that kind of smaller environment. 
There's a close fellowship that exists that, that is different from a fellowship that we share when we together in a big group. When we're together in a big group, one of the beautiful elements of fellowship is we understand and know that we're part of something so much bigger and there's such diversity and such beauty and all of that. And when we get together and we're in a smaller group, there's a deeper level of intimacy. And even those five common elements that I mentioned at the beginning that were, that were practiced in the big and in the small, those elements of the apostles' teaching and of fellowship with each other and communion of prayers and, and even praising God together, that takes on a whole new life and a deeper personal expression when we meet together as just a small group. Where when I'm together with a small group of believers like in a link group or just also doing a life with other believers and constantly meeting and encouraging each other, I'm able to better walk out the teachings of Jesus in my life. There's a personal level to my worship and personal prayer that I can receive from other people. And when I'm together in that small kind of context and there's people around me that love Jesus and love me, that's where my needs are known. That's where people know me as as a person. And we read in verse 44 and 45 of our text today that all who believed were together and they had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and their belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. That there was a, a sharing that was happening and a care and concern for other people that when I'm together with a smaller group of people, that's when they then would know my needs. And if I'm struggling with something and I need help with something, when I'm known in that little community, that's where the help comes from. And we hear testimony after testimony after testimony of people that are in link groups that have been so blessed by their link groups when people have helped them with food and prayer and support and lifts and visiting them in hospital and, and all these kind of things that happen in that small, intimate setting when we meet together in link groups and in other smaller groups. And so I would encourage you, if you're not part of a small group, that you would join, become part of a small group and even just for you, maybe if you've done that already, as much as you appreciate and can give thanks for the church and the wider church, or maybe how you have appreciation for what Linkway has meant to you, that at the same time, you can also give thanks to God for the individuals that have helped shape you and shape your faith and blessed you and impacted you. And maybe that's something that you need to do today where you just give thanks to God and maybe also just drop those people a message individually and just let them know and encourage them with the impact that they've had on your life. And again, that helps us so much that we're not part of the crowd and get missing and lost in the crowd. We've got people around us who who love us and, and know us deeply. In Galatians 6, verse one and two, Paul says, brothers, if anyone is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore them in a spirit of gentleness and then keep watch on yourselves lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. How can I bear the burden of my brother or my sister if I don't know them and I don't know their burdens? I can fulfill this commandment to love and support and bear the burdens of others around me when I know them and I'm connected to them in small, focused community. And then finally, in that small setting, that's also where we have room to grow. I know all of us, as we've come together and maybe in in this room in Linkway or other gatherings where you've been or big church settings, we know how easy it is and how tempting it could be for us to just get lost in the crowd, just to hide out in the crowd, let someone else do it, or you know, sometimes you feel that tugging of God to, to bring a word or share something, and, and then maybe you kind of just let it lie because someone else will. <laughs> I think we've all been there. We know how easy it is to feel even overlooked in a large group of people, but when we're in a small group, there's room for us individually to grow and to exercise our gifts, and we can actually all be involved. In 1 Corinthians 14 from verse 27, a little bit later from the 1 Corinthians scripture I mentioned earlier, we told that when the body comes together in a large corporate gathering, there are some people that they wanna come and bring a word and others wanna bring a tongue and an encouragement and a prophetic utterance and everyone wants to come and bring all of that kind of input, which is how it's supposed to be, by the way. We should come together and want to bless and, and give input. But then we're told that, well, if everyone wants to do that, for there to be order, Paul says, you know what, only two or three should bring a tongue, and then there should be interpretation. And at the most, only two or three should bring a prophetic utterance, and then the rest of us should weigh what is being said. And and you can imagine in a big group of people, if if that's the case, there are a lot of people that then won't get the opportunity to share. And, And again, just practically, we understand what that looks like in terms of orderly worship and the structure that God wants, because he's not a chaotic God. 
But when you are in a small group of people, there's room for you individually to grow. And I guess in some ways it's also, you can't hide. (laughs) And so I would encourage you that if you're in that small group of people, that you would step up to the plate, that you would exercise your gifts, that you would trust God, you would move forward and actually speak and and serve and and get involved and, and not sit back because that's actually where you have the opportunity to do that and that's where your gifts can get identified, they can be discovered, they can be exercised, they can grow. And you can grow in in leadership capacity as well. It's a beautiful thing, the opportunity that we have to be able to do that together. And so as I wrap up today, I would encourage you first and foremost to grow your expectation for what you think God can do in your life and in this church and in his church as a whole, that you would be in that place where your heart is tender towards the Lord to know that he can save thousands in an instant. He can turn situations around. He can deal with nations. And if he can do that, how much more can he do in your life? And I would just encourage you just to pray and ask God to forgive you if you've limited him in scope of what you think he can do. And I would encourage you as well to exercise some faith and trust with us that God is gonna keep on using us in beautiful ways and that as a church at Linkway, he's gonna fulfill the promises that he's given us. We're gonna be a sizable church. We're gonna build our auditorium. We're gonna plant other churches. We're gonna have impact and the fulfillment of words in Leviticus 26 and Jeremiah 32 and other places. It will come to pass. And we as a church will be unstoppable if we are devoted to being together in large groups and in small groups. And we need the Holy Spirit because if we're going to be connected and vibrant and active in those spaces, we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do all of that. And that is when we will be unstoppable. And so wherever you are today in your life, wherever you are in your faith, wherever you're in that journey with Jesus, I would encourage you to just stretch those 10 pegs a little bit wider, your expectation for what God can do, how he can do these beautiful and amazing things and grow your appreciation for the Lord to know that even while he can deal with the crowd or even the nation, he's invested in you and he's got care and concern and compassion for you as the individual and knows exactly what you're going through. And so I would pray that we as a church would continue to grow with each other, that we'd be intimately connected to each other and to the Lord so that we can do the things that he's called us to do. And so I pray that that's stirred something in you, just stretched your faith a little bit and helped you to, to maybe just refocus and go, you know what, Lord, I've made you a bit smaller than you actually are and I need to just trust you again for the big. And so I'm gonna pray together with you, pray over you, and then encourage you to get in touch with us later on the prayer line if there's any encouragement you wanna share or feedback or testimony or prayer request. And then next week we get to see each other face to face. So wherever you are, let's pray together. Bring our hearts to the Lord. And so Jesus, I thank you that your church is your church gathered in the world, both in big groups and Lord, individually and with small pockets of believers as we impact the generation around us and impact this world. And so Lord, I pray over your people right now that God, you would refresh us by your spirit. I pray, Lord, that you would open our minds, open our hearts to how big you are. That Lord, you would increase our expectation that we would exercise faith right now in this moment, even for those big daunting situations that we are facing. Lord, for you, it is an easy thing. It is a simple thing. And God, if you can save thousands in an instant, Lord, how much more so can you do for us? And so God, I pray that none of us would be wary of meeting together in the big corporate gathering of your church. And Lord, none of us would be wary of meeting together in small, intimate groups as we live for you. And so Lord, bless your people. Thank you, God, that you can multiply, that you can do so much more. And we pray, Jesus, that today would encourage us and stir us and help us in our journey with you. So we bless you, Lord. We love you. This is your church, God. Thank you for everything that you're doing for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And so folks at home, wherever you are, if you wanna reach out to us, please get in touch with us on the prayer line. The number for that is 074-400-2049. We would love to hear from you, love to connect with you. It's an especial burden on our hearts as we don't get to see you. And even just missing out on that for one week, is just, ah, we don't want that. And so we're really excited to be together next week. So bless you and we'll see you again then.